Hey, I'm Nick Bayer. Welcome to Pocket for Wednesday, the 13th of April. Today on the show, take two lawsuits, Fallout filmmaking, and everyone attacks a goose. All right, here's what's been making headlines. And as I alluded to before the titles, take two have another lawsuit on their hands. Grand Theft Auto producer and former president of Rockstar North, Leslie Benzies, is suing Rockstar for 150 million US dollars in unpaid royalties. Benzies left the company back in January after what was reportedly a long sabbatical following the release of GTA V, of which he was a lead producer and designer. Benzies claims that he was enticed by Rockstar to take some time off after GTA V's launch, and that during his time away, he discovered numerous deceptions in play to get him to leave the company and deny him payments. Since 2008, Benzies and Rockstar's co-founders Dan and Sam Hauser were part of a profit-sharing arrangement, which saw the three studio heads taking an equal royalty share. Oh yeah, that's a huge fucking win. Woo! Monsters. This actually sounds like the plot of GTA V, except presumably there's a lot more criminal activity going on here. Benzies lawsuit alleges that Sam Hauser removed Benzies from this arrangement due to mounting resentments after many years of high praise. The suit attempts to demonstrate how integral Benzies was to Rockstar's successes, quoting emails around the release of 2009's Red Dead Redemption, which Benzies was not originally tasked with working on. Emails from Sam Hauser explained that the game was struggling before its release. Quote, This is a recurring nightmare, said Sam. I have problems with the camera all over the place. So much so that I can't be rational or specific about it. Please help me slash us get Red Dead Redemption into shape. I am a jabbering wreck right now. I need the Benz! Not the Radiohead album. The suit claims that Benzies then stepped in to help and that Red Dead Redemption was complete within a few months. Now, jump forward six years, and the suit alleges, When attempting to resume his duties upon conclusion of his sabbatical on April 1st, 2015, a mere 22 days before my birthday, Mr. Benzies found himself unable to enter the Rockstar North office because his facility's access device had been deactivated. After being led inside by building security, Mr. Benzies was then ordered to leave by the Rockstar North office manager without reason. Now, following Benzies' announcement, Rockstar have since countersued, claiming that Benzies breached contract, and they have released the following statement on their position. Leslie Benzies was a valued employee of our company for many years. Sadly, the events that culminated in his resignation ultimately stem from significant performance and conduct issues. Despite our repeated efforts to address and resolve these issues amicably, both before and after his departure, Leslie has chosen to take this route in an attempt to set aside contract terms to which he previously agreed on multiple occasions. His claims are entirely without merit, and in many instances, downright bizarre, and we are very confident this matter will be resolved in our favour. We do not intend to comment further on this matter. So it will be interesting to see how all this resolves, but I do feel like even if it ends up in Benzie's favour, it won't be too painful for Rockstar, because apparently they are raking in the cash due to GTA Online. As part of the lawsuit, it's been revealed that GTA Online has brought in at least half a billion US dollars in revenue from microtransactions. But moving on to more modest and familiar achievements, Enter the Gungeon has had a stellar opening weekend, selling more than 200,000 copies across PlayStation 4 and Windows PC. We looked at the bullet hell shooter on Monday's Let's Play, so check that out if you're interested in seeing what the hell the game is. And it's a good one. Veteran developer Suda51 announced a PS4 exclusive brawler called Let It Die back in 2014, and now we're finally getting a glimpse. The team at Studio Grasshopper Manufacture released a small progress update for the action survival game and revealed that it's on track for release this year as a free-to-play title. And Bandai Namco has registered a trademark for Amazing Katamari Damacy in Europe. Of the 12 games in the Katamari series, only two include the word Damacy, the original 2004 release and a DSiWare title from 2009. This is causing some speculation that Namco may be developing a remake of the 2004 original. And that's the news. In a moment, goose. But first, thing of the day. Do you feel like you're kind of betraying your core internet followers by like, you know, joining TV land? Or do you feel like you have like, you bridge, you bridge the gap. Well, I, I mean, I will leave you behind in a heartbeat. <laughs> I
Up Is Not Jump has made a name for himself on YouTube, recreating trailers in Fallout 4. His latest project was the Star Wars Rogue One trailer, and it's pretty darn good. What will you do when they catch you? What will you do if they break you? If you continue to fight, I mean, I will leave you behind in a heartbeat. <laughs> I I'm joined now by Goose, because he had opinions. Mm. So yesterday on Good Game, you had an IMO section where you were talking about Let's Players. Yes, People again. like me, and you think that we are ruining the games industry. Well, that's a stronger way to put it. Talk me through it, and you remember you're in MySpace. Fair enough. Okay, uh, so what actually happened was uh, the story we talked about a, a week or so ago was that Ryan Green, the developer of That Dragon Cancer, mm -hmm. he came out and said that uh, he had not made as much money, if any money, because of Let's Players who were streaming their game and basically ruining the experience, therefore people weren't buying it. Yeah, I believe uh, at the time the story broke, uh, he came out and said that they'd sold 18,000 copies of the game Correct. and he had yet to see a single cent from it. Yeah. Uh, and But the YouTube hits on playthroughs of his game were in the millions. Yeah, yeah. so quite substantially more and they could have made a lot more money. Yeah. Now my opinion from that is that I think Let's Players in general don't show the right level of respect or the amount of uh, support to the developers of the games that they stream. Mm -hmm. And I would think in a situation like this, there needs to be more support from them to provide an avenue for people to play that game, to buy that game, to support the developer. Uh, and currently, I don't think that, that exists. Okay, so that was your stance on this. Yes. And then the internet happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just going to start off with an attack. Well, th just to be fair, just most people agreed, didn't we? Yeah, and just to be fair, we ignored all those people. Yeah. Uh, no, we didn't. All of you wrote very nice things. Thank uh, you. So the first one comes in from Hayden, Hayden James Marshall, who says, what's so different to what Bajo and Hex do by reviewing a game? And what Nick Boy does, his live streams, and first plays as well, is wrong? And he, I imagine there was lots <laughs> There's of this There's a lot of finger up. shaking. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll let you start that and tell me what, what do you think you do differently from, say, a, a straight upload of a game that has no commentary or anything like that? Obviously... Yes, so, I, I mean, I I find myself falling between the two camps on this. Mm. That The difference there is that people come to see me. Mm. So they come to see my opinion on a game, they come to see me entertain them, and the same for Bajo and Hex, that they, they are trusting us and how we look at games. And particularly, I mean, to Hayden's point, she talks about, you know, what, what makes it so different, is that we provide a lot of commentary, mm. we provide a lot of critique, we provide entertainment that doesn't necessarily happen just because of the game. Yeah. And uh, in the case of my first plays, because I do way more let's play stuff, yeah. what I tend to do is most of the time it's a first look at a game. And that at the, I, I, you know, I go, here's the developer, here's what they've done, here's where you can get it, and then here's what I think about this, Hopefully this has wet your appetite enough if it's interesting to go look at it. Yeah, and I think that is the main difference that uh, I think there is out there in terms of what Let's Players can provide, mm. is they can provide a, a level of entertainment or a level of critique um, that you wouldn't usually get just watching a straight upload mm. of a game, which is just no commentary, playing through 30 parts, uh, which is almost kind of like filming a movie and just uploading it. I agree, I agree with that. I think that if you are just recording your gameplay session and putting it up. That's yeah. not a let's play, that's actually just the game. Yeah. You've just done the game. Where's the, uh, but I do think that it, as soon as you start adding something unique that you have created, if it's just you know you talking and making jokes or observations yeah. or critique, then I do think that thing now belongs to you. This I agree. Is your, you have created a piece of content. I agree, however, I think there's a whole spectrum there. And what I'm concerned about is there isn't really a way to regulate what is classified as original content and what is just a straight upload of a game that does ruin that that uh, entity. Yeah, I mean, I guess copyright claims catch some of this stuff, but mm. I, I don't know how you begin to regulate... Because what, what you're actually saying there is to regulate the quality of someone's work. Yeah. And that you're going, I'm sorry, you weren't entertaining enough or you didn't give enough critical <laughs> thought, so therefore you don't deserve... To, tr to profit from this because you're just not good at it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, hard. it's hard to regulate It's a to tough way that. to say it, but I kind of agree with that. 
Oh! Yeah. Here we go! The Goose Opinion! I'm just saying that I think, you know, there needs to be a level of quality. That doesn't just come down to entertainment. Yeah. That quality is summed up in things like how much originality you put into it, how much of your own work has to go into this as well. And that can come through thought and, you know, commentary, as well as what you physically add to that gameplay. So you're an exceptionalist. Yes. You believe that just some people are just inherently better than other people. And they should rise to the top. <laughs> Alright, so moving on now to uh, the next response from Daniel McCormack. This one's quite long, okay. but I do feel like Daniel brings up a lot of really good points. So, right. um, for some indie titles and narrative-based games, Let's Plays can become an issue. However, this isn't the case for all of them. Wired wrote an article on Davy Readin's The Stanley Parable, and Davy discussed how the game's success was made from Let's Players playing the game. I should also note Minecraft was made popular entirely by Let's Plays. There was no other form of media during its rise to success that significantly made Minecraft popular as it is today. I believe Let's Plays are an extremely important resource in today's video game industry with popular personalities like PewDiePie, Markiplier, Achievement Hunter, Total Biscuit and the like. And by the like, I assume he means Pocket. They all have extremely important voices within the gaming community. They're fundamentally the new review system for contemporary viewers and they're free advertising to the developers. Some viewers like myself may watch the start of a narrative-based game and become interested and end up purchasing the game. This is why Good Game Pocket's first plays work. Right. There's a lot to deconstruct here. I, I, like, let's take the first part where he talks about narrative-based games because yep. I feel like the core of this issue comes down to narrative-focused games. Definitely. That you can have... That uh, you look at something like Shower with Your Dad Simulator, which, you know, <laughs> PewDiePie looked at, we looked at, a heap of Let's Plays looked at, and that game became popular for a while. Yeah. I would say off the back of those people. Definitely. Because you can have a different experience each time. But if you're playing through, you know, That Dragon Cancer... There's not even a choice system where it's like, Stanley Parable, I did this and that was different See, than I find this. that interesting that they talk about Davy Reed and doing the Stanley Parable, mm. which, yes, I think Let's Plays could be an interesting way to explore other narratives or other variables in that game in particular, because that was a big part of that game. Yep. By contrast, I would look at The Beginner's Guide, yeah. which was also by Davy Reardon, which l doesn't have any of that choice. Yeah. And I think in that case, that game in particular, I think could be ruined by Let's Plays, no matter... And I did a full playthrough of that. You did, yeah. And um, look, at the same time, I think you injected enough commentary and enough, mm. you know, original thought into that to make that something that people could go, right, here's how much I've watched, I'm going to stop now, I'm going to go and play it. Yeah. But um, I guess what to take from that is there are variables within variables here. You've got linear games, but you've also got games that you can expand upon if you choose to play it. That's, I mean, it's really interesting you say that because I have thought that. That, you know, that we look, sometimes when we do full Let's Plays of stuff, it's generally for narrative based games because yep. because that's how you can finish a game, like yep. you can finish a narrative game. And I go, oh, I wonder if people, you know, if I'm costing sales here. But I think at the end of the day, so many people who watch that are watching it because they, they haven't bought the game. Mm. And and that they've decided to not buy the game. The game is out. The game is the game has generally been out for you know a couple of weeks, a, a, a couple of weeks or yeah. or at least a few days um, since uh, by the time we get to it. And so you've had the chance to buy the game mm. and you haven't. And so what you're doing is you're watching me experience something that you weren't going to buy. And maybe you were going to buy it later down the track, but. I've had plenty of, like, this is anecdotal evidence, but lots of people in the chat when, you know, I stream games, either go, hey, I just came in here to say hi, I've watched 15 minutes, but now I'm leaving because I don't want this spoiled for me. Happens all the time during Beginner Guide, Firewatch, all those sorts of games. Okay. I've got other people going, I finish a game, and they go, that was amazing, I'm going to go play it. Because yeah. they want the game experience, they want to actually experience it for themselves. Okay. And then you get people who love the game after they've watched the whole Let's Play. Sure. But they only know that they love it because they've experienced the whole game. And there was no way for them to know that at the beginning when they could have bought the game before they watched it in the first place. Yeah, and I think a lot of that comes down to how entertaining that Let's Play is. And yeah. again, that's something that's under your control or whoever is creating that Let's Play. Right. And so then we've got one more point here uh, coming in from Stephen Fox Cully. And can I just say, between Stephen Fox Cully, Daniel McCormack, and Hayden James Marshall. I feel like all of these people are writing essays at Harvard or something. These are some great names. Mm. These are some fan these are no niche Richardson. These need to be sort of embossed on red leather books. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, Stephen Fox Cully says watching Let's Plays is the only reason I buy games these days. If uh, if you start trying to make a quick buck off these people or scare them off your indie games, they're going to go nowhere. Think about the free exposure and advertising. If I like the look of a game, I don't need a link. I just Google it. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, I did bring up the point in the IMO that I think more Let's Players should support 
the devs and one way they could do that is linking through to the mm -hmm. game side or, the, or some way to support them. But I think support is the key word there. It's not just, yeah, you could go and Google this game because everyone knows how to do that. Yeah. Um, a valid point, but I think showing that support in the way that you do when you finish a game that you enjoy or play a game you enjoy, mm -hmm. and it is by complimenting the developer on what they did right, mm -hmm. something that people can pick up on and go, you know what, that's something I would like to play in a game. Yeah. Um, or even just, as I said, like linking through to some pages like uh, That Dragon Cancer had a donate yeah. um, button as well that you could go through. So you might say, hey, look, I really enjoyed the Let's Play. I'm not going to buy the game, but I do want to support them somehow. Yeah, right, okay. And even just following through to see what projects they're going to work on next and ways to support them like that. I do feel that sometimes the Let's Play community can be very uh, insular and it can be a little narcissistic when it's just about really getting you know, their view counts up mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and they just think games are out there to be consumed and to be redistributed the way they want to do it, which is in this case by filming it and re-putting it on the internet. Yeah, I, I get that consideration to someone else made something that now you're enjoying and that you would love people to do the same for you so you could do for them. Yeah, I, th I, I, I think that's totally, like, not just fine, but yeah, that's a good point. And my only thing I would add to that is that a lot of these Let's Players are single entities. They are one person mm -hmm. who are, is working to build their channel, and so that's sort of where their thought process stops. Um, whereas someone right. like a developer has a team behind them and they need to support that team, they're looking forward to the future, and so that's why it is a real concern for them. Um, and I think when we do bring up examples like the bigger Let's Players, mm. like PewDiePie and even you guys to an extent, it's like, you know, you do have uh, sort of a bigger business model around that. Mm. So you will throw yeah, out more Or in support. our case, the government. <laughs> yeah, there's that. But you are throwing out more support back to the devs because you have a, a rapport with them, you have yeah. a relationship with them. And I just think that people should be more aware of that when they are starting up or when they are developing their channel um, and trying to get a following because yeah. as I said at the end of it I think audiences see that kind of philanthropy and go yeah I could get behind this this person because I, I think that's a really good point um but to bring it back down to brass tacks yes we're just gonna put it all out on the table here let's play is good or bad as a whole because I think that the core thing we're talking about is are they doing more harm than they are good and in the case of of that Dragon Cancer, it is the game that is the reason it did not sell. Okay. And it's it's not because it's not good, and it's sad that it happened to this game, but it's because it is a game that is so confronting, and it's talking about a child dying of cancer. This, this is not Call of Duty. This is not a game where people are like, yes, I really want to play that. This, mm. is, this is something where I go, I need to put my headspace in a place where I want to experience that. There are people in the office who have kids who will not play that game. Yeah, and maybe in that case, a Let's Play is a better way to experience it because you've got that other person diving in Possibly. and you're just observing it. And, and, and maybe there's, you know, it doesn't translate to, uh, there, you know, 18,000 copies sold compared to millions of views. Hmm. Those millions of views are not millions of people watching through the whole thing. No. That could count as someone just watching that video for a couple of minutes to just get an idea as to what this game is and go, I can't pl I can't watch this anymore. I yeah. can't play this anymore because this is too much. Or just going like, I'm just curious as to what it is. I'm not going to buy it anyway. Yeah. But it's basically like a trailer. Sure. I think from that we can assume that, I mean, Let's Play is good or bad. It's, you got to do it. It's your opinion. Of course I would say they are good. They are, they are part of the, you know, the growing gaming culture. I guess from this, what I'm trying to get out there is that I have a concern looking forward that it's not being regulated uh, to the degree it should be, and it has the potential When to... you say regulated, do you mean by an external force or just self-regulated? I think both. Yeah. Both. Wow. I think regulated at, at all, like apart from we've got the strict copyright auto algorithm that YouTube is doing. Yeah. That's an example of an external force regulating Let's Plays, but yeah. at the end of the day, I think it does come down to self-regulation, almost like there needs to be a sort of Let's Play etiquette. Um, right, forward. okay. Because without that, I think we do have the potential to harm not just smaller games like That Dragon Cancer, but just I think there are more problems out there that we haven't even foreseen yeah. that could happen. I mean, that's quite a negative way to look into the future, but... No, that's okay. You're allowed to be negative. You're an exceptionalist. Everyone else is worse than you. Yeah, that's uh, but I, no, I, I, I do think that I agree with you there, where the, the idea of a quality guy Mm. is something that just a rising tide lifts all boats, really. Yeah, like, exactly. If, if, if everyone makes better content, then everything is better. And those examples will be followed by the people who, you know, come behind them as well and think, you know, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to follow someone like PewDiePie and I'm going to take lessons from what they do. Yeah.
All right, well, there you go. Opinions all round. Let us know in the comments what you think about this now that we've, you know, had a bit more of a discussion about it. Do you watch Let's Plays when no one has any commentary or are you going to Let's Plays to watch commentary and critique on a game? Let us know in the comments and while you're there, please suggest a talk through topic for tomorrow, guys. Please. And while you're on the internet, check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nick Boy at Pierre at GG at Monkey and at Sam Gee. He's at Goose Mangus, and there are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's Think of the Day graphic was made by CF to Bone. Good work. Thank you very much, CF to Bone. If you've made a thing, please set it in. Until tomorrow, Nick Boy out. Goose out. I'm done with arguing. Need a break. Yeah. Is it because I won? Yeah. <laughs> no! I- no! I We've can... already cut. <laughs> <laughs>